Welcome to Tech Driven Business brought to you by Innovative Solution Partners. In this episode, Shabbir Akil Danish, CFO of Exis, rejoins me to talk about how transformation leadership, mass customization in a data driven economy results in innovation and disruption. Listen in as Shabbir shares what makes companies successful in this new economy, as well as disruptors being seen in the media industry. Welcome back to the show, Shabir. Thank you. Happy to be back. Awesome. Awesome. So as we continue the conversation with Shabir Danish of Exist, uh, in our previous episodes, we had talked about how transformational leadership and the combination of mass customization drive success for an organization. You know, and that is very true. But at the same time, I want to take it to the next level. And today I'd like to talk about how all this combined together with a data-driven economy we are in and how it has resulted in innovation and disruption as we have seen in, in the last couple of years. How does this sound, Shabir? Sounds great. Let's do it. Let me start with this. What are some of the common threads you see in companies, you know, especially that are driving innovation and creating disruptions in the industry? Yeah, you know, when we look at some of the most successful companies, right? Now, I'll, I'll pick a couple that I think will resonate with everybody. Uh, look at Amazon, look at Disney, uh, look at Netflix, uh, these uh, Facebook, you know, um, there's a common thread in all of these, right? We, we, we ended our last conversation on this topic, which was know your customer, right? And the, the, what that means in a data-driven economy is the ability to know each individual customer and segment them using the data, not just da- data that we gather uh, from surveys, and, but, uh, you know, so what I say, direct methods, but also some of the indirect by studying behavior and understanding it and using it uh, to do two things, benefit the consumer and then understand how we can provide those services better. I even take something as simple as uh, Google navigation, right? Um, I don't necessarily want a program to to know or a computer or anybody to know where I am at every minute of every day. But if I can use geolocation so that it can give me very specific directions and reroute me, I'm all in. So the companies that can find ways to understand the consumer and give that value back to their customers, those are the ones that are winning. And that's the common thread I see, whether you're talking Amazon, Disney, Netflix, Google, uh, these companies are finding ways to get really focused on their consumers at a very specific level, doing that on a mass scale and returning that value right back to the consumer. Those are the ones that are winning. Makes total sense. And I think that, like you said, I mean, it's been a, a race in that direction. And I see a lot of different industries and companies adopting that, that, that culture of knowing their customer. And like you said, the more you know them, the better offerings you may have for them, uh, where it makes a difference to them as an individual um, and then takes that to the next level as everybody is trying to why for new customers and grow their customer base. So, so let, let me, let me, uh, let me jump into, uh, into your area. You know, you are, your background is in the media sector. What are some of the specific disruptions you're seeing in that area? Let's talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I mean, I think some of the largest disruptions that we're seeing actually are in the, way content is being produced in media, as well as the way it's being consumed. Look, uh, many, many years ago, you know, uh, if we look 10 years back, all of the premium film and TV content in the industry was being produced by, you know, the majors, uh, Universal Studios, Paramount, you know, the, the large studios that we all think of uh, as you know, we, we grew up with that. Uh, and, and then you add Netflix to that mix now and Amazon, the others. Um, but according to the most recent analysis, 65% of the, 
of all global production and content of you know 250 billion dollars in, in production of film and tv content uh, is being produced by independent studios and filmmakers that's a huge shift in how stories are being produced and told uh, across the world and so there's a massive disaggregation uh, in the media sector and the way these stories, which makes sense because production and technology is getting easier and easier. And we've seen this with other mediums, whether it's uh, books or radio or uh, television, it's it's the same trend that we see over time, right? Whereas storytelling gets easier, there are more and more people out there uh, telling uh, and with the capabilities uh, to tell great stories. On the other side of that, the way consumers are uh, watching and experiencing content is shifting dramatically. And everybody's seen the stories about uh, studios going day and what they call day and date, which is uh, I put a movie out in the theaters and I put it for you to watch at home on a streaming platform at the same time. But really what we're seeing is with the advent of 5G technology, with the advent of over-the-top video delivery and distribution, um, the streaming market has just exploded. In 2019, uh, the the number of streaming uh, the number of subscriptions worldwide was something just south of 700 million. Uh, now in 2021, that same number is about 1.1 billion, and expected to be about 1.6 billion in 2025. And so this means more video content is getting to more people in via more avenues than ever before. So that definitely makes a, a, a lot of sense, especially when you talk about, you know, from a disruptions point of view, uh, it, it's interesting to see that growth, right? Uh, when, when you when you look at this growth and this disruption, you mentioned, you know, 2025 is going to be 1.6 billion. Do you think beyond that time, like, you know, in the next 10 years, this will double or, or how, the Looking at a trend, I mean, how do you see this growth moving forward? Will it absolutely. Further? absolutely. Look, I, I think everybody has their own crystal ball of where this industry goes. Uh, look, I'll tell you, uh, from my, I tend to look at things from a macroeconomic perspective. Uh, and what I mean by that is that um, while technology changes, you know, as, over the years, um, human nature uh, is something that is fairly consistent. And I think... Uh, storytelling is is so basic, uh, so fundamental to the human condition that we're going to see more and more uh, people embracing the new technology, uh, the new technologies that are out there, uh, so that they can take advantage of uh, some of the best storytelling out there. And so, yeah, I definitely think as we see uh, distribution get better, as we see... um, those technologies become more accessible worldwide. Uh, we're going to see a tremendous level of growth, especially in, in places like the Middle East and Africa, Southeast Asia, um, where traditionally uh, it's been it's been a challenge uh, uh, to to do some of this. Okay, no, definitely. Now let, let let's take a, a, a different route. You know, let's talk on a personal level. Some of the hurdles or, or accomplishments, you know, as you see, which is helping you transform your own career. Can you share some of the, the some of the hurdles and accomplishments? Absolutely. Look, I've spent the last 20 years being uh, a, a strategic planning executive, right? That That's something I enjoy doing very much is taking a look at trends, understanding where it's going and modeling that out. Whether that was when I was working digital distribution for Universal Studios uh, or uh, financial planning and analysis for content distribution, or now uh, the the CFO and co-founder for Exist, uh, I spent a tremendous amount of time uh, looking at the market trends and seeing where that's going. Uh, That's something I enjoy doing. When it comes to my own personal career, it sometimes feels like I have to shut some of that off, right? Because uh, it can almost hurt you to try to plan your career out too far in advance, right? And I find myself catching myself many times when I think about my own personal growth uh, because uh, I think our careers are so dynamic and there's a lot of opportunities that come your way uh, just you know six months from now or a year from now or, or 
two weeks from now um, that uh, you can't plan for. And so I think uh, some of the dynamics that I work with when I think about my career and when I think about what I do for a career is not trying too hard uh, to plan too far in advance. Have a plan, sure, and have a uh, have a north star, but uh, allowing great things to happen and taking advantage and you know I guess seizing that moment when great opportunities come your way. So you see that as an accomplishment, right? Uh, I see. Well, you know, I would say it's something I've had to learn. So I think uh, fighting that tendency to wanting to plan every step of the way for the next 10 years, uh, that that was a hurdle for me. That's something that I had to learn uh, to do. And then uh, transforming into uh, be having that level of confidence uh, to know that I, I know ultimately what I want to do. I know where my talents lie. And then being open to those opportunities as they as they come by, just like this one with Exist, you know, as I was, I had spent 20 years in corporate life uh, and then uh, found myself just obsessed with uh, what we were building here at Exist and, you know, made that that jump between corporate and startup. Um, honestly, that, that was a huge personal accomplishment for me. You know, that was something where I'm jumping into the unknown. Uh, and that can be hard, you know? So, yeah, so I, I looked at it both as, as a hurdle and an accomplishment. Thank you. No, thank you for clarifying that. Cause that, that now it helps, especially when you talk from both angles, it just makes it much easier to follow. Like what are some of the things that were in your space versus where you at today, you know, and you looking back and also looking forward at the same time. Right. So that takes me to my next, uh, question for you, uh, when you talk future, right, uh, we're always looking at trends or stories, things that are happening. Can you share some of the trends or stories that you are following personally? You know, it's very interesting. And I, we'll stick on the, the career topic uh, for, for a minute. Is apparently I, I'm not alone in... in um, taking a break from corporate life and, and working and startup and, and being focused there or trying, try my hand uh, in a different environment. Um, one of the stories I've been following is something uh, a lot of people are now calling the great resignation. Um, and it's starting to hit the economy. Uh, I, I think in a lot of ways, uh, right before the pandemic and continued uh, throughout. And so what, what the great resignation uh, is, if you're not familiar is this mass exodus of, of sometimes some really tenured executives who are leaving corporations. Um, and it's, it's starting to create challenges for companies to effectively build out their workforce. Uh, some of the statistics, there's, there's over 40 million people. This was a record uh, that resigned. I think 42 million people resigned in 2019. And in 2021 already, uh, that number is predicted to be, you know, well over 10 to 15%. Uh, and, that goes counter to, uh, I think, a, a lot of what some people have to say about the millennial generation, which, in my opinion, has been mischaracterized as, you know, either sheltered or, or taught not to take risks. Uh, these statistics would, in fact, suggest otherwise. And so I'm, I'm really curious to see how that plays out. And, and maybe it, it starts creating some of these grassroots uh, innovations in companies and startups uh, that I think will be really fascinating uh, to watch and see how it plays out over the next couple of years. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think that has been um, in my one of my previous podcasts also, we talked about workforce and, and how that last couple of years since 2019, it cuts across all industries and how things have been changing as far as workforce goes and what kind of challenges it brings to corporate America as well as uh, you know, small to medium-sized businesses where uh, ownerships are changing, all that dynamically affecting the market, right? And, and it's an interesting trend to follow. So thank you for sharing your insights into that. Um, and since we are coming to the end of our session, I would like to ask this question, which I always ask, you know, what is the one takeaway you would want to leave with us today? 
Look, when I when I think about uh, our conversation specifically today, um, we think about and we see what's 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 out there around us. Uh, I, I would say the, the the one thing I'd love for people to take away from this conversation uh, is to uh, to be open, to be open to new opportunities and new ways of doing things, um, and and to take those risks, do those things you've always thought about doing. Um, now's the time. Not not tomorrow, uh, today. There's a lot of change happening out there, and I think um, there's a lot of important work to be done. The more people we have out there uh, who are challenging the norms and who are willing to try to do things different, uh, I think the better it will be for all of us. And so uh, if there's one phrase I would leave everybody with, it's to inspire change. Got it. Makes a lot of sense. So I, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Shabir, for sharing your thoughts with our listeners. Thanks for listening to Tech Driven Business brought to you by Innovative Solution Partners. Shabir shared his insights on how successful companies are using transformational leadership and mass customization in this data-driven economy to drive innovation and disruption. His key takeaway? Be open to opportunity and doing things differently. We would love to hear from you. Continue the conversation by connecting with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Learn more about Innovative Solution Partners and schedule a free consultation by visiting isolutionpartners.com. Never miss a podcast by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Information is in the show notes.